Well, hello! Hello sa inyong lahat! Welcome sa ating uh, daily devotional for today. We are now in episode 271. And uh, today is a Monday sa Pilipinas. And good morning to everyone na nandito sa lugar na ito or maybe even in Asia, no, na same time zone. For others, uh, good afternoon sa inyo, good evening, no, depending on your time zone. Salamat po for joining us today dito sa ating online uh, daily devotional. We do this uh, live every day at 7 a.m., uh, Monday to uh, Friday. So you are welcome to uh, just uh, join with us and you know, put some uh, uh, comment uh, dive in the uh, comment section and let us know how we can uh, uh, minister to you uh, or mga musta lang po kayo, uh, whichever is the case. And uh, of course, if you are listening uh, via uh, replay, uh, maraming salamat din. That's good. Uh, kahit hindi live, uh, at least you are listening via replay and I appreciate that and uh, everyone uh, out there na nakikinig ngayon, uh, salamat po for uh, really joining me here sa ating daily devotional every day, uh, Monday to Friday. Uh, today, our topic po is uh, letting go of uh, control in God's presence. We are still talking about yung uh, going to places of silence and solitude as a very important na, ano, na discipline sa buhay natin. Making sure that we regularly set the time, intentionally set the time, go to a place, you know, physically where we can be uh, just silent, you know, not talking with people. Of course, we are talking with God. But being in solitude, you know, uh, disconnecting muna at least for a while, at least temporarily, from people, you know, going to a place like that uh, to commune with God. Uh, this is so important sa buhay natin, you know, as uh, people of faith, you know, as those who choose to follow Jesus. We need to do this and uh, it should be something na naka-built in sa buhay natin, sa lifestyle natin, uh, regularly. And in terms of yung length of time, uh, sempre if we are just starting, we might have uh, just a brief time siguro. But I hope and pray na it would uh, uh, increase over time. Now we can in, you know, lengthen yung time natin being with the Lord in silence and solitude. Uh, it would be good kung we can spend the entire morning or the entire afternoon or okay, uh, by God's grace, even the entire day, no, and just really uh, focusing on the presence of God. Now, when it comes so to uh, this, of course, there are a lot of uh, questions, and uh, you know, uh, people are asking, "Anong gagawin ko don in the place of uh, silence and solitude?" And that's what we're talking about in in the past few days now. So today we are going to look at. Uh, 
another psalm, you know, Psalm 131, verse 1 and 2. Uh, again, to give us a, an understanding or an idea of uh, what should happen actually when you go to a place of uh, silence and, and solitude. No? It, it may be a garden or somewhere or your backyard or maybe even yung CR, you know, just being quiet there uh, with the Lord. Or in your room, of course, which is the more uh, usual case. So, basahin natin yung Psalm 131, uh, verses 1 and 2. And uh, let's uh, meditate on that, no? Verse 1 says, My heart is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. Verse 2. But I have calmed and quieted myself. I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. So let's uh, pray and, and ask God to just speak to us as we open our hearts and minds to this uh, passage. So let us all pray. Lord, maraming salamat po, Panginoon, for today. Uh, it's a Monday here in the Philippines and uh, probably it's a Sunday elsewhere. Thank you, Lord, for your grace upon us. Thank you, Lord, for uh, keeping us alive and continuing to sustain us so that we can accomplish your purpose, Lord. Uh, that for which we were created and we were born in this generation, Panginoon. So, Lord, continue to uh, reveal yourself to us. Help us to understand your ways. And uh, dito sa pinag-uusapan namin, dear Lord, about going to places, Lord, uh, just to be silent and in solitude with you, Lord, and just communing with you, Panginoon. Teach us how uh, to do this, how this can really be uh, a vital component ng walk namin with you, Lord, each and every day. And uh, for those, O oh Lord, na maybe hindi pa nila nagagawa to, continue to give them inspiration and guide them and motivation as well, Lord, na, uh, for them to really try this and start doing it. And for others naman who are already doing it, Lord, I pray na you would keep us uh, motivated and inspired uh, to just... Uh, uh, continue with this habit, Panginoon. So, Lord, once again today, we ask for your guidance and we pray na you would speak to us and guide our thoughts as we are talking about this, Panginoon. And tulungan niyo po ako, Lord, that I may be able to speak faithfully uh, in accordance with your purpose and grace for everyone. Uh, use me, Lord, as your mouthpiece and uh, help me to speak the truth uh, in love to everyone. Thank you, Lord. Salamat po, Panginoon. Uh, we rely on you uh, for this whole uh, uh, exercise and this whole ano, uh, ministry. Lord, we just put our faith in you that you would indeed meet us uh, right here uh, in this uh, daily devotional. Salamat po, Panginoon. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, purihin ang ating Panginoon. You know, we've been talking about yung finding places and, and really making the time talaga to be in a place where we can be alone with God. Um, you know, disengaging mo now with people and uh, just focusing, you know, our hearts and minds to the presence of God. Uh, that's well and good, of course. And we know, you know, the, we, I hope by now that you understand the concept. You know, it's, it's really just you know, finding a place like that. A place of silence and solitude. I call this a place of grace. Because in such places, we do experience God's grace. We receive God's grace for our lives to enable us to do um, that we cannot do by ourselves. See, this is the nature of the spiritual life. Uh, we do certain things in our power, you know, like going to a place of silence and solitude. God has given us the the ability, the grace to actually choose that. So, he, this is the nature of the spiritual life. We do certain things, no, like going to a place of silence and solitude, like I said. Pero, you know, we do that in order that we may be filled with God's grace so that we can do that which we cannot do by our own powers. no. And that includes everything else, like, you know, uh, being able to 
to live and being able to uh, uh, do the things that God wants us to do or be the kind of person God wants us to be or obey His commands or resist temptation or do ministry. I mean, everything else depends on our interactive connection with the living God you know, in His presence. That's why it's really a question of uh, life and death for us, if we understand the truth, no? We cannot really live our lives uh, by ourselves. We are not self-sufficient or self-existing. Uh, we are limited in every way. Sure, you know, there there, there are some things probably you, you can do, uh, but it's, of course, very limited. You know, God has given you the ability to do certain things, but each time we do something, it expends energy, and soon, you know, we run out of energy, and so we either have to sleep, or we have to eat, or do something, you know, just to sustain us. We are never self-existing on our own, uh, and and that's the truth, right? Uh, but so much more in terms of the kingdom of God. I mean, there's really nothing we can do by our own powers, you no, know, that would have any eternal significance. Uh, that's why Jesus said, you know, the flesh, that is our limited capacity. The flesh counts for nothing. Only the Spirit gives life. So this is a spiritual truth na kailangan natin maintindihan sa sarili natin. But let's face it, it's not easy. Going to a place of silence and solitude can sometimes, or rather siguro, can be often uh, frustrating, you know, especially for those uh, who really desire to meet with God in that secret place. Minsan, it can really be frustrating for people that, you know, so they try to go to a place of silence and solitude. So they, you know, they wait there, maybe they pray, and or maybe they open their Bibles, hoping that they can encounter God. And what typically happens, of course, um, is a lot of frustration because, well, nothing happens actually. You know, you don't hear God's audible voice. There's no, parang some supernatural presence that you actually feel or experience. Okay, yeah, you know, you read your Bible and really nothing comes out of it. You cannot understand. You look into it. You stare at the pages of your Bible and nothing seems to be happening. And this can go on maybe, you know, for several times until you really get frustrated and you just give up and say, na, wala man nangyayari, you know, why should I continue doing this, you know? Again, you know, this, this is uh, really reflective of uh, how we have been formed so far sa buhay natin. Because uh, basically, we, ha we have been formed by a culture and a world system that basically teaches us that we have to be in control, you know, we need to control things, we need to control our environment. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, that's partly part of our, I know, uh, sorry, the, na, na redundant ako, partly part, you know. Anyway, ibig sabihin, this is part of the imago dei, you know, the image of God in us, you know, that we have this desire to put things in order and to control, it, et cetera. But of course, when, when God created us in His image, ang purpose niya is for us to really be able to accomplish that, not by our own strength, but through our connection and dependence and reliance upon the power of God. Now, we are to reflect the glory of God, not by our own abilities, but by the power and presence of God. So, yun ang intention ng Panginoon. But uh, what has happened, of course, is that we have been disconnected with God, uh, and we have sinned, and everyone else, you know, we have fallen short of God's intention. So now, you know, we try to just control things, control our lives, and, uh, you know, of course it's frustrating, especially when you're trying to control something that you cannot really control, diba? And this is often the cause of a lot of anger and anxiety and worry sa buhay natin. Uh, when we try to control the circumstances ng buhay natin, we may try, but then we, you know, eventually fail. Or uh, more often the case, we try to control people around us, no? Uh, hoping that they would uh, just uh, submit to our will. And of course, it doesn't happen like that. People are people, so they still do what they want to do. 
and we end up being angry at them kasi they don't want to follow yung gusto natin. So, it it results in a lot of frustration sa buhay natin because we are definitely prone to try to control things. And whenever merong mga tao o na mga bagay-bagay sa buhay natin uh, that seems to be going against our will, uh, so we try to control even more. Okay, so dyan ang gagaling lahat ng ulcer, lahat ng sakit, you know, heart disease, everything. Because uh, really we cannot rest uh, in God and, and really, you know, just depend on God's grace. We, we always want to make things work out the way we want it. And, um, you know, uh, we look at David in Psalm 131 and we see a different attitude. Sabi niya, you know, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not haughty. Now, he, he is speaking about something internal, you know, in himself. You know, yung kanyang countenance or yung kanyang mindset, you no? Know? Sabi niya, my heart, you know. He's not just talking about uh, his physical, you know, uh, ikang person, you no? Know? But rather, the inward part. Of his being. My heart, sabi niya, is not proud, Lord. My eyes are not haughty. So he's making a choice not to control things. Not to be, uh, you know, uh, the, the kind of person who wants everything to work out the way they want to. And then sabi nila, I do not, sabi ni David, I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. So, madaling seta, he knows how to recognize his own limitation in terms of understanding, you know, in terms of analyzing things. You know, yung mga young people nowadays, usong-uso ngayon yung sinasabi nila na parang may tendency daw na mag-overanalyze. Well, I think hindi lang naman young people are prone to do that, even uh, adults, you know. We tend to overanalyze things, we tend to, you know, we want to just make sure that there's no mystery, you know, sa buhay natin. But that is not the kingdom of God. You know, the kingdom of God, you know, is um, uh, something that is mysterious. You know, how God transforms us, how God changes us is mysterious. We do not really know the intricacies of that. You know, we we may examine, for example, yung mga processes sa ating human body. Uh, of course, scientists have done that, you know, so, ano nangyayari when the heart beats or sa pumupunta yung mga cells, yung dugo natin, you know, when we breathe, etc. Scientists can do that, but uh, that's all they can really do. They cannot really examine the movements of the soul and how the human personality is transformed in the presence of God. What it means, of course, is that when we come into a place of silence and solitude, we put our faith in God whom we do not see, but who sees us. This is the testimony of the Word of God sa atin, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. God sees and God knows what you do in secret. And, well, He is always present. He knows everything na uh, ginagawa natin. You know, if we read Psalm 139, you know, sinasabi doon all throughout that psalm, that, that there's no place that you can go where God is not there. I mean, He's present, right? Everywhere. Mga theologians, they call this the omnipresence of God. You know, term nila, no? Nosebleed, di ba? Pero what it means is simply that there's really no place that you can hide from God. Okay? And He knows when you are seeking Him, when you truly desire His presence. Sometimes kasi we approach itong mga bagay na pinag-uusapan natin, you know, silence and solitude and prayer and communing with God. We approach this as parang a to-do task, you know? Okay? Parang may listahan tayo, kailangan mag-quiet time, and so we do it. And we never really get anything out of it kasi it's simply just a uh, another human enterprise, another human activity kung saan we just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing, di ba? As a Christian, dapat nagka-quiet time ka. Na nanahimik ka, impepray ka, babasa ka ng Bible, but you don't really desire God Himself. And you know, when when you think about it and you want to have a relationship with God, uh, just like you would like to have a relationship with another person, for example, you really cannot control, you know, the the outcome of that 
relationship. In fact, when you want to be in a, uh, li- a loving relationship with a person, you really have to surrender. You know, that's why you're really actually taking a, a great risk, di ba? Kaya nga yung mga tao na na broken heart talagang matindi ang epekto sa kanila because they have opened themselves, they have become vulnerable uh, to the point na, of course, the person that they are trying to open themselves up to now have the power to hurt them or to do something that might discourage them, etc. No? So sa madaling salita, um, Opening yourself up to another person can really be, you know, dangerous and risky. And that's why some people never do so, no? Ayaw nila mag-open up sa ibang tao. Uh, unfortunately, kapag siyempre ganyan ang experience natin sa buhay natin, uh, we tend to develop yung defense mechanisms na sinasabi ng mga psychologists. So, kapag tayo ay nakaranas ng maraming hurts and disappointments sa mga tao, we tend to put up a uh, defense and we try to control you know, uh, every relationship that we get into so that it doesn't happen again, so that we don't get hurt. Unfortunately, we, with that kind of mindset and attitude, we sometimes bring the same you know, kind of uh, no, ikanga thinking in our relationship with God. So we also want to control God. So when we go into God's presence you know, and we pray, we want God to speak immediately. We, we don't allow God to speak if ever He wants to speak or to speak in a way that He wants to, to speak. So, madaling salita, we, we demand. We basically say, Lord, nandito na ako, so you've got to make this work. You know, kailangan maranasan ko yung presence mo. And when it doesn't happen, they conclude na, you know, useless naman itong exercise na to. Nagpe-pray ka, nagbabasa ka ng Bible, wala naman nangyayari. I think we need to learn how to surrender ourselves in the presence of God. Uh, you see, and this is something that I want to share this morning, uh, the place of uh, silence and, and solitude you know, is a place of surrender, not control. It's a place of surrender. Verse 2 of our passage says, But I have calmed and quieted myself. Now notice that, but I have calmed and quieted myself. So David is taking a choice which is within his power. He chooses to quiet or to calm and quiet himself. In other words, he chooses not to control the situation. And then he says, I am like a weaned child with its mother. Now, yung weaned, you know, W-E-A-N-E-D, refers to that uh, situation na uh, yung mga nanay sa inyo dyan, those who are listening, those who are mothers know this very well. Kapag ang isang uh, baby ay hindi pa na napapasuso, you know, hindi, hindi pa nakakainom ng gatas, you know, talagang you know, aligagayan, makulit, you know. Pero pag nakainom na ng gatas yan, you know, uh, pag na-nurse na siya ng mother niya, well, uh, you know, the child begins to just quiet down and be satisfied and be controlled. Uh, just, you know, lying there uh, at the breast of uh, his or her mother. So, yun ang sinasabi ni David. Uh, I am like a weaned child with its mother. Like a weaned child, I am content. So, this is really a picture of of what should happen when we go into God's presence, into a place of silence and solitude. We really do not try to control because we are interacting with the living God who is independent from us. He's not an object. That's why pinagbabawa sa scripture ang gumagawa tayo ng mga images because God is not a thing. We don't control God. We go to God in willing surrender uh, and we are ready to receive whatever He gives us. And it may not be what he, what we desire, you know. Or maybe gusto natin na uh, kilabutan tayo o tumayo yung mga balahibo natin o maiyak tayo. Maybe we, we want those kinds of experiences. And maybe sometimes it would happen. And you know, sometimes when we read the Bible, we imagine na yung mga men and women of God 
whenever they you know interact or relate with God na lagi na lang it's you know with thunder and lightning and lagi na lang may supernatural na mga events happening pero that's a that's a misreading of the word of God you know when we read the word of God carefully we see that in many cases men and women of God simply just related with God and live their lives you know na wala namang mga extraordinary events all the time each and every day Now, I say this because sometimes we imagine na uh, pag ako ay pumunta sa isang place of silence and solitude na laging magiging ano yun, parang kakaibang experience. Okay. Now, in in many cases naman, in fact, more often than not, we are simply doing it by faith. We are going to a place of silence and solitude, knowing that our Father sees us and knows us and hears us. And so we do so by faith. And what happens there, of course, is by God's grace, kung ano yung gusto ng Panginoon na ibigay sa atin, no? First, God is good. He might just simply just give us peace in our hearts or rest or you know and remember you know we'll, we'll talk about this uh, scripture is not parang meant to be parang a uh, Russian roulette you know minsan kasi mga tao when they read the scriptures parang nililipat-lipat nila yung pages hoping na meron mag-strike na isang passage na parang wow ito nangusap si Lord that's not how we use the scriptures and we'll talk more about that later pero again it's another way of controlling no Even yung mga tao tend to be proud because they are able to exegete the Word of God, you know? Exegesis, yan yung term kasi na ano, that is used by those who know the Bible. You know, they're able to study it more deeply, you know, they go into the original languages, ganyan. Uh, maybe they know theology. So, people who have that kind of knowledge, means and they approach the Bible with a sense of controlling the text, you know, making sure that they they really uh, they really understand. And, and so, once they, they understand, of course, they begin to be proud that they do understand it. But the purpose of the Word of God, again, we'll, we'll talk more of, of this, is to lead us into the person of Christ. Okay, the truth should lead us to the person of Christ. So that we may know Him and love Him, and so that we may have a personal relationship with Him. So the place of silence and solitude is a place of surrender, not control. And so when I go to a place where I, I want to just be silent before the Lord, and I just want to be alone with God, it may be na siguro looking from the outside you might, it might just be an ordinary thing i'm just quiet in a certain place and it may not be na you know na merong mga matitinding supernatural experiences during that time uh, for sure i've had those experiences you know where i really felt the presence of god in my life during my time uh, in silence and solitude pero those are rare moments in most cases i'm just trusting that god being present, knowing and seeing what I do in secret, will indeed bless me and reward me, perhaps in mysterious ways that I cannot know or see. Um, usually, the effects would come later. I would see it. For example, if I regularly uh, really spend time in God's presence, I notice na. When I when I engage again with people, with my family, with my wife and my children, I become more self-aware of myself. I become more, ano, parang attentive to my anger or irritability or anything that is that is not God's will for my life. I I notice that I become more aware and present, sa sarili ko. And uh, I also get to hear more of what God is saying sa mga uh, moments na yun. And during my time in God's presence, may wala naman except maybe some thoughts, you know, that God gives me, uh, areas of concern that He wants me to pray about. You know, there are certain things that, you know, I know uh, this is the Lord speaking, but uh, in ad- at other times, you know, the whole experience would just, you know, Uh, be over uh, 
And I would just rest. I would, sabi nga ni David, like a weaned child, I am content. Ang ibig sabihin ng content is, you know, there are times na maganda yung karanasan and there are times na hindi maganda yung karanasan. But it's okay. You know, um, our joy is in the Lord. So remember, when you practice this, when you make this a habit sa buhay mo, you know, going to places where you can be alone with God, don't try to control yung experience na yun, you know, by making things happen, okay? Uh, misan, nakapikit ka and you're meditating and praying and you expect na magkaroon ka ng, ano, ng parang this wonderful spiritual experience of God's reality and maybe He would give you that. God is good. God knows when to give you consolation, when to encourage you. But that's the whole point. God decides that. You don't control that, that reality. You just simply go into His presence by faith. And you remain there knowing that something mysterious is happening beyond what you can understand. When you are interacting with God, you are, you are surrendering yourself and putting your hope and faith in the living God who sees what you do in secret, who sees your heart. And so He blesses you and fills you with His power and presence. And then you are able to do that which is not possible by your own ability. Now, let me give you yung parang ano, uh, an example nito. Uh, first, in the area of preaching, and then maybe in the area of uh, uh, worshiping or singing, you know, leading the church in worship. Now, I'm not saying that yun lang the only places where God can actually uh, manifest Himself. But just to give you an example, no? uh, there have been times that uh, I, I preach the Word of God and Talagang it just falls flat, and I know now it's just coming from my own natural powers, you know. And I, of course, I feel ashamed, you know, even now sharing about it. Pero may mga times na ganon na I, I was just preaching, uh, basically based on what I know, no. At kaya ko ang gawin yun, eh. kaya ko magpreach uh, on my own, and I can study the Word of God, kasi I'm trained, you know, I'm seminary trained, so I can read the Bible, you know, exegete the Bible, etc. Um, but then it's different, you know, when it's coming from uh, that relationship that I have with my Heavenly Father, wherein I surrender everything and I depend on Him and I do not, you know, rely on my own abilities. I simply trust that God would extend and expand and multiply and, and use my lips uh, for His glory. When I am fully surrendered to the will of God, I notice that my preaching is different, and people also notice that, that it's different, that it has power, and the presence of God seems to manifest in my life. So more and more, I realize, God, that's what I want. I, I, I'm just preaching on my own ability. I want to preach the Word of God, not not in in my wisdom or ability, but really through the power of God working in me because I know that's that's what's going to produce the kind of fruit that really glorifies the Lord. And then in terms of worship then, you know, sorry I, I'm speaking about these things because this is my experience. Um, minsan kasi people can just lead worship kasi marun naman talaga sila kumanta. Magaling naman talaga sila kumanta. But there's no power in it. There's no, people's lives are not really transformed by that kind of singing. Now, compare that with somebody who really, you know, spends a uh, regular time in a place of silence and solitude, solitude who, who really communes with God and depends upon Him. Notice you know, when this person actually sings, there is power, there is impact, you No, know? there are results far greater than what he or she can accomplish by his own ability to sing. It's like God lifts up yung gift na yun and transforms it, it into an instrument of grace. Now, you know, I just gave you two examples like that, but it can be done, it can be applied also in many other areas of our lives. As a parent, you become a kinder kind of parent and 
a person who's not easily offended, you know. You become a father who speaks kindly and wisely and lovingly, which might surprise everyone else around you, no? Kasi ang pagkakilala nila sa'yo, masungit ka. You know, or maybe as, you know, among husbands and wives, there is more patience, there is more love, rather than a critical spirit, lagi nilang pinupuna yung mali. And maybe your spouse would notice that, no? That you are different. So, really, wh what I'm saying is that when we go into the presence of God with complete surrender, trusting that He is, that He will and, and that He is able, no, to do whatever it is that is necessary to bring about yung purpose niya sa life natin, to transform us, uh, you know, create in us a new kind of awareness of His will and so forth, uh, to give us the grace to be loving and patient and joyful, etc., and to really multiply, you know, yung what we are able to do in our own power. And so His power parang merges or encompasses yung ano natin, uh, power natin, and multiplies it, you know, a hundredfold. It's like nung binigay nung bata yung kanyang, you know, lunchbox, yung counting fish, counting bread, and it was multiplied. So that it fed a multitudes. That's how God's power works sa buhay natin. And whenever we regularly choose to be in a place of silence and solitude, which must be a place of surrender, not control, then we experience more and more this life that God is talking about, the God kind of life, you know, eternal life as the Bible describes it. The power of the kingdom of the heavens becomes our experience, no? And we have a foretaste of it in this life. Of course, it's, you know, not yet complete and perfect. We still struggle, but we do experience the reality of it. So, buhay natin, the very presence of God right now. Yeah, nga, it's, it's, uh, it might be shocking or maybe hard to believe. But, you know, Dallas Willard uh, once said, you know, you don't have to wait for heaven, you know, after you die. You can start experiencing it now by living by faith in Jesus Christ. So, sa madaling salita, each and every day, we are able to do so much more that we can do by ourselves if we rely on the Lord. But to rely on the Lord, we have to go to places of grace. And not just be always out there in the world uh, doing whatever it is na gusto natin gawin and not really ikang uh, relying on the presence of God sa buhay natin. So fundamentally, sa Christian life, ang mahalaga is to make sure no, na you have regular times of going into a place of silence and solitude each and every day and siguro if uh, it is possible, longer periods of time, in fact, mas maganda yon, like you have a Sabbath, you know, where you just spend time in silence and solitude before the Lord for a long period, the whole day, by the grace of God. And uh, this is not parang some kind of uh, activity na parang nagpapahinga ka lang. You are... Choosing to dwell in God's presence. And sabi nga ni David, like a wind child with its mother, like a wind child, I am content. May that be our experience as well. No? As we go to a place of silence and solitude, kung saan man yan, sa garden, sa kwarto, sa CR, wherever that you can really get away from people. And uh, just be quiet before the Lord. God is there. God sees what you do in secret. Uh, when you come away to be in His presence. And of course, you receive the reward from the Lord. The reward of His grace and mercy and presence of buhay natin. Not something that we earn. But something that He freely gives to us by His grace. And that's what we want. Yun ang gusto natin, right? To be in the presence of God and to experience His power. 
So, remember, you know, itong mga ganitong places are places of grace. Something happens in these places that is, hindi uh, natin mapaliwanag. It's a, myster- it's a mysterious uh, kind of, uh, you know, spiritual reality. But we see it in the scriptures, we see it in, in Jesus, and we see it in his apostles. When we have, when, whenever we practice itong discipline ito, which is in our power, you know, nobody else will do that for us. Tayo yun. We bring, we bring ourselves, our bodies, our whole selves, our minds, and our emotions right there in the presence of God in silence and solitude. And when we do so, in complete surrender, not trying to control the experience, but simply saying, here I am, Lord. Something mysterious happens. Grace after grace is poured out in our lives in the presence of God. And we are able to live and do the things that He wants us to do and speak a way that He would not want us to speak. We become truly the image of God in this world. Let us pray. Lord, marami salamat po, Panginoon. Um, Thank you for teaching us that uh, we can indeed experience um, more of you, Lord, as we make this choice each and every day and uh, regularly and intentionally to bring ourselves, our whole bodies, our whole being into those places of grace, like in place of silence and solitude that we have been talking about. Nalangin ko po, Panginoon, that indeed uh, we would just be able to learn more of this as our discipline each and every day in order that we may be filled with your power and your wisdom to be able to do that which is beyond what we can do for ourselves, to really live our lives in the reality of the kingdom of the heavens. Salamat po, Panginoon. Thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. So, puri ng ating Panginoon, I hope that you learned something today na nakatulong sa inyo or makakatulong if you apply it, of course. So, uh, thanks be to God for each and everyone. And uh, right now, I'm going to just, uh, you know, greet everyone na nag-comment and uh, if you are listening at, uh, of course, hindi ka nag-comment, I really wouldn't know whether you are listening. I know that more people are listening than than what I can actually see sa comments. So, ngayon pa lang sinasabi ko na salamat to everybody and uh, uh, greetings to all of you, you know, mga taga-IGSL, mga nasa, nasa abroad or whatever, even here sa Pilipinas, mga nakikinig that I do not know who you are, I hope you will let me know. Um, but uh, before I actually, you know, uh, read these uh, comments, I just want to mention lang na if you need help, uh, if you have questions, if you need prayer, uh, please don't, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, just go to Messenger at itype nyo lang, R-L-C-C-P-H-I-L. Just share your prayer request there, whatever it is na ano nyo, and somebody would uh, be there to help you. Okay? Go to Messenger, type nyo lang po R-L-C-C-P-H-I-L and someone will be there to to help you if you need prayers, if you need anything, no? Uh, they'll do their best uh, to, to minister to you. Now, if you're a person na uh, may desire ka to minister online, uh, which is a good opportunity right now kasi dahil sa pandemic, you don't have to be here in the Philippines to be part of the ministry. Uh, just contact uh, Roselle Saron. Ayan, si Roselle Saron. Nakikita niyo yung pangalan niya, Roselle Saron. Just contact her. And Roselle, if there are people who would contact you, please help them to be on board sa ating support team. No, So si Roselle Saron is our leader in charge of the support team. Uh, sila yung mga sumasagot doon sa messenger, nagmi-minister sa mga tao, nagpe-pray. So wherever you are, if you want to be part of that ministry, you don't even have to, you know, hindi naman kinakailan na high-tech yan, you know. You, you're just going to download an app sa phone mo and 
you'll be able to be notified kapag merong mga nagtatanong and you can reply you know, and talk to them sino man yung humihingi ng prayers so wherever you might be you can be part of this ministry just contact Rosel Salon Amen so good morning Rosel thank you for being here salamat and salamat sa yung Father's Day na pagbati by the way Father's Day nga pala ngayon sa US ano, sa ibang lugar na iba yung time zone nila ngayon pala sila nagsiserbate ng Father's Day so happy Father's Day to you kahapon uh, happy Father's Day sa amin okay uh, libre kami sa paglalaba at sa pagluluto and they joke lang anyway so Glory Faye and Dakig salamat good morning thank you Tess Reyes maraming salamat for being here uh, March Kamba uh, good morning then thank you Presi hello uh, Terry Reyes magandang umaga salamat thank you for joining uh, Hannah Soler uh, salamat sa pagbati ng Happy Father's Day uh, happy Father's Day din sa, 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 sa husband mo and, and everyone else na connected sa you or dads as well. Happy Father's Day. Uh, Sir Ella Arceo, good morning. Thank you po for joining. Uh, Nalin, uh, Annalyn, salamat po. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ron Kaugdan, thank you for joining today. Okay, uh, Melody Emralino, uh, kindly include sa prayers uh, yung brother si Epoy na maging negative and to all my loved ones there na negative din po ang uh, first test. Uh, uh, si Melody, are you living uh, outside of the country? I mean, you're not in the Philippines, ganun ba yun? And then you want us to pray for people na nandito sa Pilipinas, si e Epoy and your brother and as well as your loved ones? Tama ba yun? You're from abroad. Anyway, so let me know. So we, let's pray for Epoy lang very quickly. Lord, we just pray for Epoy and um, we ask na maging negative na yung swab test niya. As well as lahat nga ng mga kamag-anak nga ni Melody na according to her mukhang uh, nagkasakit din ng COVID. So we pray for them for healing na maging negative na yung swab nila na ma-overcome na nila tong virus na ito in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Okay. Thank you. Praise God. Uh, Lorraine Sumagpao, thank you. Salamat for being here and for inviting all your friends. Thank you. Tess Kunanan, maraming salamat. Uh, Maria Esteban, uh, good morning po. Thank you. Uh, Eyang Fontanos, salamat. Good morning. Uh, Tita Elizabeth, Tita Beth, thank you po. Salamat. Thank you for listening. Uh, Diyan po sa... Uh, Illinois, thank you. Stay safe po. Ingat po sa paglabas. Uh, Rainer or RJ Navera, thank you. A long time no see. Salamat for listening again. Uh, Marita Gose, good morning. Uh, third, hello, third, good morning. Masensya na, hindi tayo masyado nakapag-usap ng matagal kahapon, but I appreciate yung dinala mo sa bahay namin. Uh, God bless you, third, and ingat ka, okay? Uh, Rosemary Manga, salamat po. Good morning. Uh, hello, Didi. How are you? Uh, I'm trying to look for yung profile ni Matthew Wood. Hindi ko mahanap. Uh, please uh, share with me yung, ano, yung link na kanyang personal profile so that I can add him sa ating uh, RLCC on Facebook and uh, add him also as a friend. Okay. Uh, Gail Alvarez. Uh, good morning, salamat, thank you for joining us uh, Marife Palencia, magandang umaga uh, Maret and Brother Ray, salamat uh, Thank you for joining again every day, salamat GV, uh, good morning uh, Death uh, Valenzuela, salamat Thank you rin sa yung ministry sa ating mga Up Next Kids Every Sunday, I'd like to give a shout out for Death and her team Sila Weni, na lagi pong nagmi-minister sa mga bata Thank you, Det, uh, for your willingness to serve uh, in this way. Salamat. We really appreciate I really appreciate that. No, Thank you. Uh, Charo, maraming salamat, Charo. Thank you for being here. Uh, Tita Mila, Tito Oscar, thank you po for joining from Illinois. Uh, Audrey Ilagan, salamat. Thank you for joining today. Uh, Lorraine, uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, Gina Uy, salamat. Salamat po for joining today. Helen Joshua, uh, God bless you. Uh, Eden Anunsasyon, salamat muli, thank you. Uh, Brother Ray, thank you. Uh, Chad Gonzalvo, salamat, thank you for being here. God bless. 
Uh, May Cabradilla, salamat. Thank you for joining together with your husband, uh, Dondon. Salamat for joining. Uh, okay, Rain Muli, uh, Chad Gonzalvo, uh, Abby Maceda. Hello, Abby. How are you? Thank you for joining here. Salamat. Thank you for uh, uh, participating dito sa Daily Devotions. You are very much welcome to join us every day at 7 a.m. Amen. All right. Let me see. Siya uh, ko na Red Ventura. Good morning. Thank you for uh, joining ngayon. Uh, Tita Mila. Ah, si Tito Oscar to. When we really want something, we pursue it relentlessly. We find ourselves in a place of our control, a choice we make. But if it's about pursuing the knowledge and truth about God, we easily give up or complain in that so-called place of quiet and solitude. Why? We are not in control. We surrender that to God. Human nature prompts us to excuse ourselves. Well, okay, I hope you un I understand what Tito Oscar is saying. But yeah, we have the tendency nga to try to control even yung pag-spend natin ng time in the presence of God. So we should relinquish yung ganung classing tendency. No, We go there in utmost surrender in the presence of God. Amen? All right. So, uh, Hermie Castro, yes, thank you for listening. Uh, Tess Reyes, we repeatedly grow out of our dependence on Him and try to manage things on our own. We seek to control our world. God has to remind us that we can't. This is His job. Our role is to depend and trust Him. Well said. Uh, salamat po, uh, Sister Tess. Okay, Melody Emralino. Yes po, andito po ako sa Singapore. Ah, okay. Hello, Melody Emralino. Thank you for letting me know na nasa Singapore ka pala. Okay, so one of, si Russell Saron is also in Singapore. Uh, Gerald Reyes, one of the people listening here also, is from Singapore. So we have our Sicilians in Singapore, uh, and you can be part of that. So get in touch po with uh, Rosel. Hopefully, nakikita nyo yung pangalan niya. I showed you kanina. Uh, para you might be want to, ano, to connect with her as well. Salamat. Okay, Tess, uh, Tess Reyes, yes, happy Father's Day po. Kay Tito Oscar. Yes, pa, Tito Oscar, happy Father's Day sa inyo. Salamat po. Thank you so much uh, sa inyong ano, pakikinig dito. Okay, so purihin ng Panginoon. Uh, remember yung ating mensahe this morning. The place of silence and solitude is a place of surrender, not control. So maraming salamat po. Ingat tayo muli. Uh, it's been a difficult um, time. More than a year na tayo. And uh, we're approaching the second year uh, in this kind of situation. Pero don't worry. The Lord is with us. We can overcome. Uh, Mag-cooperate lang po tayo. Magpabakuna kung meron tayong opportunity na para you know, makatulong tayo at i-avoid na natin ang mga gatherings. You know, nakakalungkot. I have heard of people na siguro akala nila wala lang. They gathered, konting party-party, ganyan, celebration, and then ang resulta ay may mamamatay. Doesn't have to be like that. If we're just wise and we trust God, you know, uh, hindi naman kailangan mangyari itong ganito mga trahedya. But anyway, uh, let's just be careful na lang po. Uh, kung hindi naman po kinakailangan, huwag na po natin i-expose ang sarili natin. No? Tumulong tayo sa bansa natin. Uh, yung iba mga countries, by God's grace, kasi siguro mas maganda yung situation nila, like in the US or maybe Singapore, ewan ko. Uh, but sa Pilipinas, medyo mas challenging sa atin. Hindi ganun kabilis ang mga vaccinations and yung sistema natin hindi ganun kaganda. Pero let's put our hope in the Lord at mag-cooperate po tayo. Tumulong tayo at wag na tayo magkalat ng mga fake news na hindi naman po totoo. Amen? So God bless you at ingat po kayo. Bye-bye.